In the previous video, I talked about what happens in the anointing ritual at the coronation. And if you haven't watched that video, it will be worthwhile watching it first before returning here, as this video will then make much more sense. In this video, I'm going to talk about the different oils used in the anointing at the British coronation, their origin, what they are made of, and also the utensils used for the anointing, the golden ampulla and the ancient spoon. I've decided to publish a special coronation issue of the Antiquary magazine. This is an addition to the general monthly issue. I have a large collection of really interesting old photographs that I've been collecting over the years of the coronations of George V, George VI and Elizabeth II. And to celebrate the King's coronation in May, this issue will be a special album looking back at the coronations of the 20th century. There is a link in the description and above to the website where you can pre-order a copy before the publishing date in early May. There has never really been a single tradition when it comes to the source of the oil used at the anointing of English and later British sovereigns. According to the Liber Regalis, the 14th century coronation order of English kings, the king was anointed in that period with two separate oils. The king was anointed on his hands, his breast, between his shoulder blades, on his shoulders, on his elbows and finally on his head with the oil of catechumens. Uh, the oil of exorcism. Then he was anointed again in the same place on his head with the oil of chrism, the oil used at confirmations and ordinations. The oil of chrism was a highly perfumed oil that was generally consecrated once a year by a bishop during Holy Week, the run-up to Easter, and in its ingredients it reflected the holy oil that God ordered Moses to make in the book of Exodus. Two vials or ampullae were provided for these oils. One was of silver for the first oil, the oil of catechumens, and one was of gold for the chrism. And this double anointing continued right through to the Tudor period. Now here's an interesting anecdote for you. According to a document called The Little Device, which lists all the items necessary for the coronation of Henry VII, the chrism is referred to as the Holy Cream. Now, our English word cream was originally a religious word that has been transmitted into secular use and is now more commonly known in a secular context. The word cream derives from the old French word crème, which in turn derives via Latin from the Greek word chrisma, chrism. The word chrisma itself means simply to anoint. So it's a word that describes what this oil is for. So when you pour double cream on your cake, remember that you are, in fact, anointing it. At the anointing of French kings from the coronation of Louis VII in 1131, a special holy oil was used for the anointing that had a heavenly pedigree. And this oil continued to be used right through to the French Revolution. Contained in a small Roman glass vial, the oil had been found in 1131 within the sarcophagus of St. Remy at the Abbey Church of St. Remy in Reims. It was immediately associated with the oil that had by legend been provided by an angel for the baptism of Clovis, the first Christian king of the Franks, in 496. The English kings no doubt looked across the channel rather longingly at this sacred oil from heaven, but that was soon to change. In 1318, King Edward II is believed to have acquired as a personal possession and an heirloom of the royal house holy oil that was contained in an eagle-shaped vessel of gold. Both the vessel, which was called an ampulla, and the oil within, so a legend of the later 14th century records, was given to Thomas Becket, St Thomas of Canterbury, by the Blessed Virgin Mary, when he was in exile in Sens. Apparently St Thomas was praying and the Virgin Mary appeared to him 
and she drew out of her heart a golden eagle, which she gave to him. And this eagle was an ampulla, and it contained within it holy oil within a stone vial. When Edward II obtained this oil in 1318, he had been on the throne for ten years, and his reign was already becoming rather turbulent, a, a turbulence that would end in his downfall. And faced with that, he petitioned the Pope to be anointed a second time with this oil from Thomas Becket, in the hope that it would bolster up his reign. The Pope said no. His great-grandson, the boy King Richard II, was also keen to be anointed with this oil at his coronation in July 1377, but once again the Pope said no. The Pope was a little troubled by the history and pedigree of this holy oil. Eventually Becket's oil was used at coronations, and it was used for the first time at the coronation of the king who seized the throne from Richard II, Henry of Bolingbroke, Henry IV, who uh, seized the throne in 1399. I'm not sure if he asked the Pope's permission or not. But Henry had a strong devotion to St Thomas of Canterbury. He was even buried beside his shrine in the Trinity Chapel of Canterbury Cathedral, and he no doubt felt that the use of this holy oil would bolster up the rather tricky start to his reign. It is only at this point in Henry's reign that the legend of the oil's origin is first recorded. The evidence of the use of this oil at later coronations is a bit scant, but it seems likely that it was used from there on in. In 1957, Walter Ullman found in Portugal a mid-15th century manuscript copy of the English Liber Regalis, a copy made by a Portuguese diplomat. It was a copy of the text as used in the reign of King Henry VI. It stated that the oil of St Thomas of Canterbury was kept at the Palace of Westminster, and that the eagle ampulla containing it was brought to the abbey by a bishop for the coronation, attended by a procession with torches, and that the oil was used for the anointing of the king. This text suggests that the way the anointing took place in the Liber Regalis of the 14th century was the old way of doing things, and that the use of St Thomas's oil at the anointing was the new and established way. Whether St Thomas's oil replaced the initial oil used, the oil of catechumens, or the chrism, or even both, it doesn't state. I assume, given Henry VII's little device refers to the use of the holy cream, that St Thomas's oil replaced the oil of catechumens, and that chrism, which was freely available and was consecrated for use by any bishop for acts of initiation, was still used for the supplementary anointing. For her coronation in 1553, Queen Mary wouldn't use the traditional supply of oil, and so she sent to the continent to the Bishop of Arras, who was a courtier at the court of the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, to procure a new supply. We don't know for certain, but she may well have been reluctant to use the existing oil because it had been tainted by the sacrilege of her Protestant brother's anointing. Was this Becket's oil? It's not clear either way. I can't imagine Mary destroying such an important relic and heirloom of the royal house if it still existed. My feeling is that the eagle ampulla containing Becket's oil was probably emptied in the reign of Henry VIII when Becket's cult was ruthlessly suppressed and the eagle then refilled with new oil for Edward's hallowing. I don't think Mary was sending to Arras for fresh chrism, which could have been easily procured at that time, but for a replacement of Becket's oil. Elizabeth I was anointed with Mary's oil, which was allegedly foul-smelling, and James I likewise. Of course, after the English Reformation... Chrism was no longer regularly consecrated. Its use in rites of initiation was abolished by the Protestant settlement. 
It is curious that any anointing survived in the English coronation at all, given the wholesale abandoning and banning of unction as a practice for many centuries. For Charles I's coronation in 1625, it was found that the oil procured by Mary I had run dry. That or he couldn't bear to use it because of the stench. So a new oil was created using a new recipe. This oil was infused with balm. It was given various ingredients and imparted to it a strong perfume. And in that sense, it resembled the medieval oil of chrism, which was also traditionally infused with perfume. The recipe was concocted by Charles's Swiss physician, Sir Theodore Turquay de Mayenne. De Mayenne was a Huguenot, a French-speaking Protestant, and he had escaped France in 1610 to England when King Henry IV of France was assassinated. De Mayenne's recipe was made up by the royal apothecary, another Huguenot called Nicolas Le Maire. De Mayenne's supply of oil seems to have lasted until the coronation of Queen Victoria. The oil used from the coronation of Queen Victoria up to the coronation of George VI in 1937 was made by Peter Squire of Oxford Street, who were the chemists to the royal family, a new supply being made by Squire for the coronations in 1902, 1911 and 1937. In 1953, another firm, Savory and Moore, who had taken over Squire's business, made the oil for the late Queen's coronation. The previous supply had been destroyed when a bomb hit the deanery at Westminster in 1941. The recipe had officially been lost, but apparently one of Squire's old employees had kept a sample of it and it could then be re reconstructed. One story I have read, I don't know how true this is, is that some of the oil had been preserved in a Chanel No. 5 bottle, along with the recipe by Mabel, who is the daughter of Sir Peter, the last of the Squire family. The remade oil was delivered to the Abbey by Savory and more in a recycled bottle that had originally contained a perfume called Guerlain's Mitsuko. It is still kept in that bottle and in the box that goes along with that perfume with a written recipe in the deanery. It appears that de Mayenne's recipe was not deviated from very much in the centuries that followed him making his first batch. His anointing oil had a base of oil of Ben, Meringue oil, which is known to last for a long time without going rancid. In the 19th century, Squire replaced that with a blend of sesame and olive oil. The other ingredients stayed the same. This carrier oil was then enriched with the scent of orange flowers, roses, jasmine and cinnamon. This oil also had some rather exotic ingredients that were not usually included in traditional holy oils, but were added to give a depth to the scent. These included musk, ambergris, civet oil and benzoin. Musk is a deep and earthy scent that is extracted from a gland of the musk deer. Ambergris is a solid wax that is produced in the stomachs of sperm whales and is usually found spat upon the beach. Whales are not killed to retrieve it. It has a strong musky scent too. Civet oil is a waxy substance that is secreted by the perineal glands of a mammal called an African civet. It has an aromatic scent, while benzoin is a scent extracted from a goma resin. After the Reformation, the use of holy oil and the blessing rituals of chrism were almost entirely abandoned in the Church of England, and the Church of England had no right at all for blessing any oil. The anointing oil used at the coronation was generally quietly and discreetly blessed by a bishop on the day of the coronation at the high altar of the abbey, but before the service, in case such a thing caused a scandal. At the coronation of Charles I, William Lord, who was Dean of Westminster, as well as Bishop of Rochester, performed the blessing. And most deans of Westminster were usually bishops and were tasked with this role. 
there is a prayer of blessing in the coronation right before the anointing. It was inserted by Henry Compton, Bishop of London, for the coronation of William and Mary. It's a funny old thing. The rubrics, the instructions for this prayer, tell the Archbishop to lay his hands upon the ampulla containing the oil as he says them. However, the blessing is not a specific prayer to bless the oil, that would have been difficult for Anglican sensibilities to accept in the 17th century, but to bless and sanctify the sovereign who is to be anointed with this oil. It's a blessing on the sovereign and not on the oil itself. Then we come to the new oil made this year for the coronation of King Charles III. It has been well and truly blessed, but not by any Anglican cleric. It has been consecrated in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the place of Christ's crucifixion, burial and resurrection, by Theophilus III, the Orthodox Patriarch of Jerusalem. What the Patriarch has blended and then consecrated for the King is Orthodox chrism. So for the first time since the English Reformation, a British sovereign will be anointed once again with the oil of chrism. The press is making a big deal about the oil being vegan, but orthodox chrism is not permitted to have any animal products within it. So that's a non-story. There is a nod to de Mayenne's long-used recipe in this new coronation oil. According to the Royal Family's website, the carrier oil is olive oil. It's enriched with sesame oil, to which has been added essential oils, rose, jasmine, cinnamon, neroli, benzoin and amber, artificial ambergris, as well as orange blossom. In this new oil we see both tradition revived and innovation in action. Apparently the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, is going to bless the oil again. I really do wonder why. Is he not satisfied it's been blessed enough by an Orthodox patriarch in Jerusalem? Utensils are of course required for the anointing. During the ceremony the holy oil is poured from the container called an ampulla into a spoon and then the Archbishop of Canterbury dips his fingers into the spoon and into the oil to anoint the sovereign. When two oils were used two ampullae were provided. Now only one of course is needed. Now, you might imagine that given the anointing represents a sealing of the sovereign with the Holy Spirit, that the ampulla might be in the shape of a dove, which was a common iconographical way of representing the Holy Spirit in Western art. But it is not. It's in the form of a golden eagle. And that is most probably because the ampulla is a remaking of the golden eagle ampulla that once contained the holy oil of St Thomas of Canterbury. There is what appears to be that ampulla listed in the 1649 inventory of goods destroyed by the Commonwealth, but confusingly it is referred to as a dove of gold, perhaps because the commissioners were expecting to see a dove and not an eagle. It was of gold set with pearls and it weighed eight ounces and was contained in a special box with silver gilt studs. The present ampulla, which was commissioned from Robert Viner and was made by an anonymous London goldsmith, is significantly grander than the item described in 1649. It is a wonderful, lively classical piece, eight inches tall, and it weighs one pound and seven ounces. The head of the eagle unscrews to allow the ampulla to be filled with the oil and the oil is disgorged through the eagle's beak. The oil is then poured into the bowl of a spoon, which is the oldest item in the British coronation regalia. Long thought to be Anglo-Saxon, it really dates from the late 12th century. The bowl of the spoon, which is oval and is divided into two lobes, is decorated with foliage, probably acanthus leaves. It's reminiscent of the sort of decoration called stiff leaf decoration that you get on sculpture in the late 12th and early 13th century. The bowl is attached to the handle of the spoon by a tiny little monster's head and the handle is decorated with more foliage of an interlacing pattern and then there's another monster's head at the point where the handle then narrows into a delicate spiral twist. 
in the 1349 inventory of the regalia in Westminster Abbey, a liturgical spoon of antique form is listed among the other regalia, and it's almost certainly this. And it's also present in an inventory of 1450, at which time it was believed to have been a royal ornament belonging to Edward the Confessor. Our first evidence of the spoon being used at the anointing is at the coronation of James I in 1603, when it started to be used for this purpose is unclear. During the Commonwealth, when the rest of the regalia was melted down for coin, the spoon was sold to a civil servant, a minor court official called Clement Kinnersley, who was a yeoman of the king's wardrobe. He paid 16 shillings for it. It is certain he bought it to preserve it, and in 1661 he returned it to Charles II in time for his coronation. The spoon was then refurbished, and it was at this point that the four little pearls were added to the handle, and it has been used at every coronation since. It is a breathtaking piece of work, And in a few weeks' time, the Archbishop of Canterbury will once more pour oil into it as he anoints the king's head. What an extraordinary piece of continuity that is. Once anointed with holy oil and blessed and hallowed for his work, the king is now ready to receive the robes, the emblems of majesty and his crown but more about those in the next video. Thanks very much for watching.